first of our Davos specials, I'm joined here by the chairman of Wipro, Azim Premji. Mr. Premji, thank you very much. This has become a tradition of sorts. We open our Davos programming with you, and it's our one opportunity to sit down with you and talk to you in a little bit detail uh, regarding your outlook, both on your business as well as the economy. Let me start with the global economy. Do you expect, based on all the conversations you have with your team, with clients, that this will be a year of recovery, probably of stabilization, or maybe even further deterioration? Well, I would say it's a year of stabilization. The U.S. is looking a little better. Uh, I know there's a fiscal cliff coming up again in February, yeah. but I think it will get resolved. Hopefully it will not get kicked around too much into the future. Mm -hmm. But we think for our business in IT, U.S. should be better. Uh, Europe is more or less stable. You know, it's like a Hindi movie, one week it's good, one week it's not so good. Mm. But uh, the euro is a little firmer. That's some indication of the strength of the economy. I think it will be stable. We don't expect any catharsis to take place in Europe. Okay. Far East is, uh, is reasonably good. Mm. Middle East, because of high oil prices, continues to be good. Uh, Australia is good. Latin America is okay. And uh, India has seen a spate of reforms taking place over the past two months, uh, all of which are positive. I mean, if that momentum keeps up, it's good for the economy. Okay, I want to get about get into the India reform aspect in a little more detail, but before that, I'll persist with the global questioning. You seem a little more optimistic about the global scenario this year, and yet when I look at the guidance that your company has put out, it's a fairly broad range, sir, 0.5 to 3%. Why is it then that your guidance speaks of expected volatility and uncertainty, whereas you sound a little more optimistic? We like to be conservative in our guidance. And there 0 is, um, 0.5 to uh, 3 is a very wide range. We normally give a 2% rate this time, we're giving a 2.5% rate, just neither here nor there. <laughs> well, what uh, is the worst case scenario you're building into when it comes to the 0.5% floor? Some, sometimes the billing carries over into the new year. And we just have to keep those contingencies in terms of what we communicate. I don't think you should read too much into it in terms of the two and a half percentage span versus the two percentage span. So this global picture that you just described, is that what will deliver three percent? Is that what will deliver 0.5 percent? I think you should wait for what guidance we give in Q1 of next year. No, so I'm trying to say that, did that does that global picture fit in to 0.5 percent and hence we should expect that if the global economy stabilizes as you mentioned, you will probably meet the higher end of the target. I think you should expect that we'll do a result between half a percent and Three percent. Let's right. not try to be more specific. Otherwise, we'd have given it in our guidance. What did you make of your numbers this quarter, sir? Because the uh, your two your two of your other competitors, both TCS and Infosys, uh, you know, outdid uh, expectations by market analysts. So did you by a margin. Hmm. But I think that they were more delighted with the Infi and TCS numbers than Wipro. We could have done better. Some of our some of our uh, order closures carried over. Some of our billing carried over. Uh, it was okay. I mean, it was what was expected from the analysts. We did that. Uh, we expected uh, our standards are higher, so we'd be less satisfied with those kind of numbers than we would have been otherwise. If there was a carryover, that means the fourth quarter, uh, you expect to outdo expectations? We expect to also have carryovers from the fourth quarter into the first quarter. <laughs> All right. You know, it's it's been two years since we last spoke about restructuring Wipro. That was the time when you had just shifted from the two CEO model to a single CEO, Mr. Kurian Tukova, uh, as CEO. And um, Wipro was coming out of, I think, maybe uh, a fairly bad phase or a negative phase, so to speak. And you were hopeful that this new structure with new focuses would bring the growth back. But it still languishes at number four. What has gone wrong? What have you not been able to fix? You know, we have focused a lot on setting right fundamentals. It's amazing how much fundamentals we have set right in the past 18 to 20 months. For instance? And uh, that, that, you know, whether it be in terms of the sales engine, whether it be in terms of sales training, whether it be in terms of uh, restructuring how we go to market, the responsibility being rested with a single individual for large and medium-sized accounts. The same thing which we have been doing now in delivery in the past six months, fundamentally increasing productivity, fundamentally streamlining it. We have consistently raised our customer satisfaction levels. We've consistently raised our employee satisfaction levels. So all the fundamentals are proceeding on plan. Uh, our growth should have kicked in a little early. We are disappointed it has not. 
Uh, but, uh, and what reasons do you attribute to the delay in the growth kicking in? I think it was the lack of momentum in the organization two years back and that takes time to pick up again. Have you been able to fix that in the last two years? Because from all the analysts I speak to, I'm not sure they're fully expecting you to catapult yourself from the number four position to three or two in the near future at least. And so I'm you, wondering no, whether you sort the of exceeded the timeline you had laid out. position in terms of relative size. I think we would like to have industrial leading growth rates and that's our target. And we'll work hard at it for the next year. I can't imagine that you don't want to be number two or number one. But gaps have to be made up, you know. I mean, let's be realistic about it. You, you've put it well and you've said it, you've, you've almost made it sound like a, the bu bulk of measures that you're, you, you, you've adopted in the last two years. Are they incremental or are they transformational? They're I think what we're trying to understand. Can you give us a reason or an illustration as to why you think Wipro might make it a number two in the next year or two, what the timelines could be like? Give us a sense of how the organization is transforming. Well, I'm saying we have put, put into place fundamental structures in terms of the overall organization. There has been more pushed down of responsibility. But this couldn't have been lacking. It seemed two years ago that no, you we were... were... We were a very mixed bag between horizontals, verticals and geographies. So we really had three sets of people going to the customer and causing a lot of confusion. Now only the customer engagement manager of the large accounts really is a single point responsibility for the customer. And everything reports into him, the geography reports into him, the, the horizontals report into him. It's a fund fundamental structure of how you manage an account. Uh, similarly, in terms of the uptraining which we have done to our field force, it's, it's been very systematic, very drawn out, and very much in depth over the past uh, year and a half. And similarly, what we are doing in delivery in terms of automation, in terms of raising quality levels, in terms of using much more of frameworks, in terms of trying to drive better mixes. When will we see the results, Mr. Premji? Next year. Next year? Yes. Because I remember two years ago we were talking in this very room here in Davos and you were at that time uh, hopeful that the, the change in leadership structure would yield results in maybe a 12 to 16 to 18 months. And I'm wondering whether we're lagging behind on we're that schedule right now. We are. So you're lagging behind by six months and you're hopeful that you will see some of these transformational changes kick in next year. That's right. How do we recognize, uh, you know, give us some set of numbers by which we can, you know, measure or understand that these are the transformational changes that are kicking in. It's not necessarily just a pick up in the external economy. No, it's, it's we don't give forward uh, guidances for the next year. No, I'm not you, asking for specific profit bans. I'm saying what by what do I recognize that this is a whole new Wipro at work we should see and us not having just the growth rates relative to the industry growth rates being better. That's one asset test. You should have better growth rates than the industry averages. Are you happy with this new leadership structure that you worked with in the last two years? Yes, I'm very happy with it. Are you internally also working at some succession planning, Mr. Premji? We're always working at succession planning. It goes right from top right to senior management level. So I'm saying succession and that's a key to you. responsibility of the board. So I'm asking you a direct question regarding succession to you. We have uh, T.K. Kurian now in charge. Uh, so very obviously he's, he's taken over from me the mantle of the chief executive officer's role. Right. Uh, and the chairman's position? I am the chairman, but you know I'm not involved in operating decisions. Is there a timeline uh, as to when you give up that position? Perhaps there is, but we don't discuss it in the press at this stage. <laughs> no, but is there a retirement, uh, you know, set in stone uh, from at a board level in the organization? Many organizations have a, a cut-off date. Mr. Tata just retired because he turned we have 75. You've not defined a cut-off date. So you've not defined a cut-off date. You don't intend to, or do you intend to? Well, no. Are you a 68 or 69 if I'm correct? 67. 67. So then, uh, you know, the Tata cut of data is 75. We wouldn't uh, discuss this with the media. But why? I think most large organizations across the world offer lots of transparency when it comes to succession planning because it gives people a degree of certainty. Well, succession planning, so far as the CEO is concerned, has already been appointed two years back and I think that's adequate in terms of the continuity So Mr. Kurian stands a chance of becoming chairman? He certainly stands a chance of becoming the managing director. Now restructuring is going to make you, some changes. You can anticipate my next question. It has to be about your son, Rishabh. I'm just wondering, does he stand an equal chance? Well, he's not going to be the chief executive officer. I mean, that's not the career plan for him. It isn't? No. What is that? But he would be representing ownership, obviously. No, that of course. That I mean, you can't take that have, away from anybody. That but has to have continuity in ownership. 
No, but Maybe representing ownership can point, be in, uh, in... We're just splitting this point too much. No, I think there is curiosity, given that, you know, uh, what, ki what kind of succession plan do you have in place? And hence I'm asking, not, and it's not just related to Risham, it's yeah. just I'm asking broadly, who stands a chance to have to fill your shoes in the next five years or so? Maybe we'll revisit it next year in Davos. Maybe we'll revisit it next year in Davos. All right. Uh, you did a demerger of your consumer businesses recently. Uh, explain to me why now, because from what I understand, many analysts have been asking for this for several years. You, may, you chose to make that decision now. And I'd also like to ask you why you chose not to list that consumer business. This is, again, some, sh uh, you know, uh, some requests that have come in from shareholders, even though you've offered them a cash exit. You know, the reason we demerged it now because we thought the timing was appropriate and why was the timing appropriate is both the other businesses, our pro-infrastructure engineering business as well as our consumer care business had reached a certain critical mass to be completely on their own. Okay. And the reason we decided to keep them private, it just gives us more flexibility in terms of making acquisitions, in terms of investing for the future, uh, including acquisitions which can be dilutive on margins because most acquisitions are dilutive on margins and they have large, particularly in consumer care, large uh, legacy of amortization costs which have to be charged off to the P&L account. So this speaks of a large inorganic growth plan? It speaks of a reasonable inorganic growth plan properly beyond what would be the internal funds generation from natural cash flow. And that's the only reason you've kept it uh, private? Yes, because some would say, I mean, it's, I know it's not highly private you know, in India, it, but some would say one has to ask, a listed also stock ask, what is, is the currency. listed stock value? We didn't see any specific value so far as the listed stock is concerned. Well, it's also currency in an M&A situation, but not so frequently here in no, India. We don't you use, know, yeah, exactly. never used so, yeah. the listed stock So it's not frequently used here, but stock We have enough cash reserves there. We have virtual zero borrowing there, so we have a lot of leverage we can get in that business. Okay. That combined can fund uh, significant growth rates, both organic as well as inorganic. So what would you be looking for as part of your inorganic growth strategy? We've just both, announced both one, one acquisition recently mm. in Singapore. Right. But uh, does, will it get bigger than that there. in terms of size? We're continuously looking for acquisitions. We've done about five in our consumer business. And so you far. intend to keep this business unlisted? Yes, we intend to for keep it. For the foreseeable unlisted. future? Yes. Okay. For the future. Okay. Uh, the, the other related question there are no plans to list it. No plans at all, whatsoever. Uh, what kind of response have you got from shareholders in terms of, uh, you know, opting for the cash exit? I'm just trying to understand what your stakeholding in that business would be given that it's unlisted. It's been reasonable, but I think the real call will come when the when the D days come, and that's going to be three months, four months from now. Okay. It's difficult to make a judgment on it. So, uh, in your main business, which is Wipro, you were at 78%. You were hoping that the demerger would help you meet the 75%. I was not 78%, but the uh, holding as reported was 78%. Okay. 8% belongs to the foundation. 9% right. right. belongs to the foundation. But uh, as all 78% was calculated to us from what is take, I would That's imagine. Right. Right. That's the way the law reads. Right. Uh, which, frankly, to me makes no sense because I have no control on those shares. All right, but you still had to meet the 75% limit. Does the demerger do it for you? You had requested SEBI for some permission on that account. It depends upon how Has it come, come through? No, it's not yet come through. Not yet come through. So if for some reason, so there can be only two situations. If it comes through, you're done. You don't need to dilute any further. If it doesn't, then you will have to sell some stake. Sell down or a little bit. Or you can get a deferment of time, one of the two. I don't think SEBI seems keen on well, a deferment you know, of time. Well, we are a little more you know, exceptional fairly... because we've already done one. one one offering to the public. Right. So we are the only company in India which has done that so far in terms of dilution. So we have really communicated our intention to do it in stages. So okay. we could be an exception. We could not be an exception. If you're not an exception... You'll deal with it as it comes. Yes, but the stake is not Do you have a preferred have route of how you'll sort of no. uh, dilute that remaining 3%? We do have a preferred route, but we don't discuss it with the media. Mr. Fringy, what do you discuss with the media? You know, why, why should certain internal strategies which are not public be discussed in detail with the media in a highly volatile market? Uh, if everyone believed that, we'd be out of business. Not necessarily. <laughs> All right. We have to be 